Ed DeRosa with Horse Racing Nation ahead of one of the bigger international events on the racing calendar. It's the Hong Kong International Races, and I had to go to the bullpen on this one. Admittedly not as familiar as I should be given the huge pools and wagering opportunities of Hong Kong racing. But thankfully, my former colleague at Brisnet.com and a handicapper of uh, all things in the Far East and down in Australia as well, Dick Powell, kind enough to join me to talk me through some of these races and some of these opportunities. Dick, saw you out in Arizona. Now we're shifting our focus to Hong Kong. Yes, made it on the Saratoga last night and None the worse for wear. I got my HKIR hat on from that. 2019, so I came equipped. And uh, four big races beginning uh, 1.10 a.m. Eastern Time Sunday morning. Uh, great fields. Uh, they, they, they really came up with the COVID restrictions being relaxed a little bit. A little bit easier for horses to get in and out, jockeys to get in and out. We had all the world's best jockeys there Wednesday night at Happy Valley for the International Jockey Championship, which came out a tie between Sylvester D'Souza and Tom Marquand. But everyone was on the premises, and they'll all be back for Sunday's races. Uh, they didn't uh, settle it with penalty kicks? No, they, they they I I actually they they almost had a four way tiebreaker because four different riders won the four races and they had to go back and Marquine and D'Souza had fourth place finishes but that got them enough points because there's twelve horses in each race so being in the top three or four was the difference. All right, uh, yeah, the big exciting week. Uh, they don't race uh, nearly as often as we do from a volume of race day perspective but uh, when they do the the crowd turns out it's always a big event none bigger there than the international week and i wanted to start off with the vase because it does have two horses that uh, american handicappers are going to be most familiar with of all the horses running in this quartet of big group one races and that is uh, from the breeders cup turf speaking of stone age and broom i took a peek at the anti-post odds overseas Stone Age, five to two second choice. Broom, a little bit more of an outsider, 20 to one, based on what I saw in odds checker. Uh, Stone Age certainly uh, ran the better of the two in the turf. And uh, in terms of trying to get a gauge for the, the Vaz field as a whole, how do these Breeders' Cup horses fit in? Uh, they look tough. Um, what I, I didn't check the British bookmaker odds, but beginning tomorrow, uh, let's see, 24 hours before the first race, the current odds get posted. And there's a lot of money bet in the 24 hours up to each race. So there's decent money in the pool. So if you go to hkjc.com, then look for local racing, and then look for current odds, you can get the current odds for all the races that night, not just the, the first race. And they're pretty accurate. Uh, they'll change during the day. But if you go on like 12 hours before post time, those odds are going to hold up pretty well. So that's what I'll be doing. And also give you the place odds, which with these big fields, sometimes you can get four or five to one in the place pool where you're only running in the top three. And that's almost like a sports bet. I mean, I'm getting 400, so plus 400. Nothing wrong with that. So. In, in this race, uh, Aiden looks tough with Stone Age, but I'm going to try to upset him with the two bubble gift. He's been over over in Europe, throw out the arc, because the arc, the ground was so bad, and just a lot of horses just didn't take to it, and he was not persevered with. But before that, he had run two big races, including a third to the arc winner, Alpinista, uh, if you go back, he's your typical French horse that gets a lot of soft going, very soft, soft. I think he'll benefit from firm. He's won on firm before going right-handed at Longchamp uh, last year in, in an arc prep. So I think uh, with Christophe Le Maire, we saw at the Saudi races, Le Maire basically wins every race. And hmm. he's a sensational international rider. And he draws a uh, post two. So the son of Nathaniel, I think, can sit a trip. And if uh, the others stub their toe, he might be able to pull it off 
at a decent price. Second, I am going to go with Stone Age. You'll be running into Peter Brandt colors, which we're all familiar with. Aiden O'Brien trains. Ryan Moore is the rider. Was a terrific second behind Rebels uh, Romance in the Breeders' Cup turf. His form prior to that was a little bit in and out, but then he had a he had a good third in the Belmont Derby, going a mile and a quarter at Belmont on firm ground. Came back at Saratoga, slow pace, got out kicked in that race behind Nation's Pride. Uh, Aiden's really high on the horse. He's three years old, still improving. They they were kind of non-committal about bringing him back next year as a stallion. He's a son of Galileo. So if he could win a group one, he'd have tr this tremendous value. But uh, I'm going to go with him second. I think Ryan will just put him to sleep from the rail. They go a mile and a half. They got a long yeah. run into the first turn. And then we'll see them start picking up horses. A nice sweep and turn as they come around shot 10 and a long stretch. So if you got momentum, that's what you want. And I think Ryan will get him off the rail and get him clear. Third, I'm going to go with the other eight in the horse, number one, Broom has a bad habit of not getting away from the gate very well, but he's, he's a horse that I never give enough credit. He's six years old. He dances every dance. So you keep uh, seeing these mediocre performances, but when he's good, he's real good. And we've seen that before. And I think he gets his ground, his distance, uh, just a lot of things to like about him under these circumstances. So I'm going to have to go, Two ten one in the vase, which is uh, two point eight million dollar purse. So, but I'm seeing thirty three to one on Bubble Gift. Uh, is that a, a pretty exciting price to kick things off? You, you think that's actually a reasonable come post time? No, because a lot of those odds you're looking at are more determined by British bookmakers, British handicappers, gotcha. things like that. So uh, an outsider like this, although he's a French horse, so they're not, they're not giving him much respect. So, yeah, that, that, that might hold up. I, and might be Glory Vaz is, is the favorite currently um, who who you didn't include in your top three. Uh, why are you against? Uh, one yeah, of the just um, he, he's, he's okay. He's by Deep Impact, one of my favorite horses of all time. Hmm. Joe Marrero, who had been one of Hong Kong's top riders, has been out for the first three months of the Hong Kong meeting, and then he announced he's not riding at Hong Kong anymore. He's riding in the international races uh, Sunday, but uh, Joe's going to be bouncing around into other countries. But he does pick up the mount on last year's winner, but I just uh, it just really hasn't done much since that race. And yes, he's prime for a mile and a half but i'll try to beat him love it no I, that means i'll try to beat him too because uh in, in dick we trust for the international races uh don't need to um i picked that one to lead off because it did have the two we're familiar with but from a, a superstar perspective the only clear clear favorite in the anti-post odds in fact he's odds on is golden 60 in the hong kong mile uh, one of our uh, domestic photographers, Alex Evers, who shoots for, shoots for Clip Sports Wire, he's over there. He's been talking this horse up big time. Uh, do you do you see this one as the banker that the European bookmakers do? Uh, no. <laughs> wow. All right. Let's go. And well, I like it. What they're failing to take into account is in the last race, Golden Sixty was not even favored. California Spengel was the favorite when they met in uh, the Jockey Club Mile on uh, November 20th. California Spengel is this horse who has brilliant speed. Last year, he ran the fastest first quarter of the entire meet. And yet, Tony Cruz got to the, the four-year-old the Triple Crown Series. The first race is a mile. And Tony put him in there, and he got beat. He got beat by Romantic Warriors, going on to be a great horse. Then he comes back at a mile and eighth. He beats Romantic Warrior, despite being seemingly a stone-cold sprinter. And then he goes on to the mile and a quarter Hong Kong Derby, and he almost wins that. I mean, he fought, got beat a neck. I mean, he was great. Now, this year, he's pointing to other things. So he won his first two starts. He ran in the Jockey Club mile. 
The difference that day was um, Zach Purton slowed the pace down, I think, too much, that he got away with very soft fractions. And then when they turned for home, yes, it's a kicker's race. Now, if you finish in 21.6 so last 400 meters and you already have the lead, you should win the race. <laughs> but Golden 60 threw in a 21.32 last 400 meters and beat him by, by a neck. So I'm hoping that Zach from post two, he's going to go and he breaks, he breaks just brilliantly. So he has the lead without using any energy. But I'm hoping that Zach opens up, that I'd rather have distance than a slow crawling pace and then try to outkick them. And even well, then, with the last. If it were a New York turf race, you'd probably get your wish. Yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> well, well, we're known to strangle. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that Zach, with the bigger field, opens up a little bit, makes his move maybe a little bit earlier, and takes advantage of his speed so that he has a two, three lengths lead on Golden 60 when the running gets serious. He's a serious horse. He's only four years old. Golden 67. He came off the bench. He did beat him. Um, I, I just have to stick with California Spangle. He's one of these things that if I if I go against him and he wins, and then I'm so <laughs> going with California Spangle, despite the British bookmakers. Golden 60, obviously the horse to beat. He's won 22 times in Hong Kong. Massive earnings, just just a sensational race. A son of Medaglia d'Oro out of a distorted human man. So he has American breeding. He was born in Australia. Right. And uh, but he just what a sensational horse. And I'll try to beat him. And then third, gonna go with number seven, Law of Indices from Annabelle Misham. She's shipping up from Australia in good form, has been in against top horses down there and ran in the cox plate. Two back, gets a little bit of weight off, has to overcome post 10, but they start with about a half mile run into the turn. There'll be plenty of room, and California Spangle will stretch the field out. So I'm not worried about post 10 in that circumstance. I might in some of the other races. So 217 in the uh, Hong Kong mile. 217? Yes. All right. That's uh, half of the international races. I actually want uh, people to avail themselves to uh, the Hong Kong Jockey Club site. Now, are you on there for the English? or uh, I know you work with Michelle closely. Where are your picks actually published? And if they're not actually online, that's a great opportunity for HRN because we'll put them up. But there's just a wealth I, of information I on the Jockey Club site. I don't publish picks. I, I do more fan education. I put out a weekly update with the, the last week's races and various things, how they ran. Uh, did, they, did they beat par? Uh, gives you an indication of how fast the track, how slow the track might have been that day. Winning sires, average winning uh, prices for the meet, for the week, things like that. Then I do Steve Bick's radio show Wednesday morning. I don't do picks because I don't think I can do justice to what uh, Declan does and all the other people that cover Hong Kong. I mean, it was a spectacular job. And uh, with with time zones and deadlines and things like that, it's a site I no, you'll you you have the picks and you'll be the first to have them. But normally right. I don't Love do that. selections for Hong Kong. And uh, the card, as you noted, uh, well, the Group 1 begins at, at 110, the Group 1 action. I believe the first post of the card is 11.30 p.m. Eastern yeah, Time. I believe 11.25 so, Eastern okay, Time. So, yep, settle in, and uh, we will uh, hopefully uh, enjoy some riches. The pools are huge. Horse Racing okay. Nation is going to do a live stream. So for those uh, so inclined uh, to be awake looking uh, for some – uh, complimentary coverage. Uh, Ray Catola is going to join me for that. And oh, nice. uh, very much, yeah, that'll, that'll be fun. And uh, I know there's some different wagering types over in Hong Kong. Uh, certainly all the traditional with the win and exacta and two and three horse bets. But I know they have uh, some other pools that are very robust 
and uh, yes. looking forward to just playing along and a little something different. Well, you, you you were at the conference head, and they did have a, a thing on global racing, and and one of the speakers, uh, Simon Fraser from First Bet, he made the point that even though racing is global, it's still local. So Hong Kong has triple trios and different bet types that we do not have over here. Our tote doesn't have them. Um, not I'm disappointed that we haven't embrace that that if, you know why wouldn't we have all those bets available in fact some of our outlets some of them take to the pick three some of them don't some of them have been taking the exactor which they call a forecast some of them don't so that that part is frustrating because we all we all go to these conferences and talk about global racing <laughs> then mm-hmm. when it comes to the implementation of global racing it's it, it's not it's not always what it should be, but uh, yeah, they have some monster bets Great. with just gigantic pool sizes. All right, well, we're uh, we're looking forward to, to having some fun playing along on uh, what will be Sunday morning. By the time the Group Ones begin, uh, Dick, really appreciate your time, and uh, certainly appreciate the fact of the the two races we talked about. Very. Uh, straightforward that you are against uh, the current uh, anti-post favorites, at least with the European bookmakers. So hopefully some opportunity for us and our listeners. I, I'll be backing them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Well, uh, great to see you in Arizona. Good to talk with you now. And uh, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll definitely be back uh, if you get any of these two home. All right. Thanks, Ed. Anytime. Thank you, Dick. Yep. Have a great day. That's Dick Powell, everyone. Just want to remind you uh, again that we will have that live stream uh, beginning at 1230 a.m. Eastern Time, Sunday morning, ahead of the first group one, which will be at 110. So Ray and I will set the stage. We'll play some clips from our conversation with Dick to refresh you on his picks, if you had not seen that already, which if you're watching this, you will have. Uh, but it's going to be a, a good morning, hopefully. Thank Dick again. I'm Ed. Good luck. <laughs>